We're going to look at 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. We're going to look at 1 John chapter 1 and we'll read verse 9. Now there are people who, now I'm not a good artist so excuse me for that, but there are people who get depressed over their situation in life because of one thing. Now, if there's something, if you're an honest Christian who really loves God, there is one thing that you hate the most actually. And it's actually not the devil. And it's actually uh, not wrong doctrine. There is one thing that you hate the most and that's yourself. It's because of what? Sin. I don't know about you, but the, the person that I hate the most is actually myself. You might say, why? Because this, this is a bondage, this is a cage where I let God down many times. So this, the, if you're an honest, sincere Christian, one thing I notice about people who get closer to God, they're going to hate this guy more and more and more because this guy lets the Lord down many times. So there are people <clears throat> who get depressed when this thing comes crashing down on them. And when this thing starts crashing down on them, then they get depressed and then they feel like that they're going to have to give up. So then their spiritual life in the Lord Jesus Christ is getting severely attacked. Why? Because the spiritual life is getting bombarded by this. This thing will land on top of him, and you're in the confliction with these two blocks, the spiritual life and the flesh. And you can't take it anymore when the flesh just uh, sinks your spiritual life more and more and more. So God knows what level you're at in your spiritual life, maybe down here. I don't know because of the pressure of the sin in the flesh. And if you yielded to sin the thousandth time, you know what's very depressing? It's very depressing that you think you will never get the victory. And I've right. talked to some people who believe that they will never conquer their sin. I'm going to tell you something that is totally false. Mm -hmm. You can conquer your sin. You can conquer it. The Bible promised it. Now, is it possible that you can be locked up in this thing and that there are certain addictions and sins that just won't leave. It is very true. You can struggle till the day you die. Some people think that they're so spiritual and pious that it will go away. No, we don't believe in eradication of the flesh. This flesh will be with you till the day you die. However, you can conquer what it's tempting you with. So I'm going to give you some verses that will encourage you to not quit and not give up fighting against sin in the flesh. Because the thing is is that when this keeps bombarding us there's one thing that gets us away from God you know what it is it's Mr. Guilt Mr. Guilt will keep crashing on your mind right here and in your mind it's you can't take it anymore that you just wanna give up on God and say you know what I'm just gonna end up this way and be wicked but look at first John chapter 1 verse 9 these are the promises of God if you lock it lock yourself with the promises of God, then the spiritual life won't shrink. The promises of God will raise your spiritual life up. And then you don't have to sink with this guy. Sin in the flesh does not have to sink your spiritual life. So let's look at the, prom the wonderful promises of God. We're going to start off with 1 John chapter 1. One of the most famous verses, and you should memorize this. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. The Bible says right here, if we confess our sins, what happens? He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from what? All unrighteousness. It is vitally important that you have to believe in the promise of confessing. Now, obviously, it's not like I've, I've seen, which is really sad, from missionaries who go to Roman Catholic countries in South America before they go to a brothel, a prostitution house, there's like a religious Catholic figure in front of the brothel house who holds a tithing box. And all you have to do is put your, your money in the box as a kind of like an indulgence thing, as a forgiveness of sins. And then they go inside and do the sin. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about that kind of confession. Confession has to be done with repent, a repentant heart and sincerity. But the thing is this, if you have that repentant heart and sincerity, don't feel like that, oh, you know, I'm just using this as a, as a cop-out to get away with sin. That's what Mr. Gilt will tell you. 
No, if you have a sincerity that I don't want to sin, God, Lord God, I want to give victory over this, you should not get guilty about confession. Amen. Every time you repent, the Lord will forgive you every single time. Amen. He says uh, it, he is faithful to forgive us, faithful. Now, if God is faithful to secure your salvation, don't you think that he'll be faithful to take care of your little life? If he can, he's faithful to secure your eternity, of course he can sec, uh, faithfully secure your life. Look at the book of Luke, chapter 17. Luke chapter 17 and verse 4. Luke 17 verse 4. This is one of my favorite passages, and I use this to everybody who was depressed. So I'm not going to mention some members, but I had some members who were struggling with certain sins that I'm like, well, you know, and... You'd be surprised. Some of the things that they say, you might go, I can't believe you're doing that kind of stuff. But I'll be honest with you, after being 10 years in the ministry, nothing surprises me anymore. So I can tell which sins a lot of people will struggle with more and the most, and then, you know, which kinds of people will go through that. I notice that more and more in the ministry, actually. But in Luke chapter 17, verse 4, I use this uh, quite often because it is very encouraging. So confess and repentance. Now look at Luke chapter 17, verse 4. This is what you're supposed to do with a fellow brother. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day. Now that's pretty bad, right? You commit the same thing seven times in one day. Mr. Guilt will say, you're definitely not sincere right there. See that? But look at this. Repent, right? See, there's that change. Uh, and seven times in a day, turn again to thee, saying, I repent. See, he's still sincere. Mr. Guilt might say, no, you're not. You're just using that as a cop-out. But seven times in a day, you, the Bible still sees that as still repentance. That should be encouraging. Keep reading. If he says, I repent, thou shalt what? Forgive him. Can you believe that? God demands you, if the person commits the same wrongdoing seven times in the same day, you know what I would do? I would say, nope. <laughs> but God commands us to forgive. Now think about it. If God commands mankind to do it, how much more can God Almighty, who is more merciful and gracious than man, man himself, right? That is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Let's also look at... Um, 2 Samuel chapter 12, 2 Samuel chapter 12. Now, here's another thing that will be encouraging to you. Now, this is important. A lot of people don't think about this. And because they don't think about this, that's why they feel very guilty. This is probably one of the more important things that you want to remember. When you sin, you got to realize this. You can't escape consequences. All right, there are some people who whine about uh, certain quote-unquote sufferings they go through in life, but you got to realize this. You'd be surprised how many of those sufferings could be connected because of your sin problem. See? But here's the thing, is that when you go through consequences of your sin, it doesn't have to be doomed that way, okay? You don't have to feel like, oh, this is doomed right here, and I'm done, and this is game over, and I'm going to be depressed. So there's Jonah, in case some of you were wondering, that's going to be Jonah chapter 3, verse 8 through 10. And then the other one is 2 Samuel, chapter 12, verses 13 through 23. Now, we're going to look at these two cases right here, and then we're going to call it a night. We're going to look at 2 Samuel, chapter 12, verses 13 through 23 with King David, okay? Now, have any of you committed uh, adultery or murder? I wonder, you know, if any of you did, please don't say it, all right? I don't want to know. <laughs> all right. But 2 Samuel, chapter 12, Verses 13 through 23, look at this. David committed something that's, uh, I assume, <laughs> I'm just going to say it, most of you didn't commit, okay? Safe, safe to say. Anyways, oh, some people's faces are turning red. No, I'm just kidding, all right? But mm -hmm. right here, David committed murder and adultery. Now look what God said. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And, David, and Nathan said unto David, the Lord also hath what? Put away thy sin so he did forgive you, all right? He forgiven you. Don't worry about that sin anymore.
But does that mean you escape consequences? No. Look at verse 14. Howbeit, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also that is born unto thee shall what? Surely die. So God says you will pay, guarantee you will pay for the consequences of your sin. Now, did David get depressed and took his consequences? Look at this. This is interesting. Verse 16, David therefore what? Besought God for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. Why? Why would David do that? It's as if he realized that the Lord, he is merciful, that he can not only forgive you of your sin, but he can also take away or mitigate the consequences. Now, what happened? The child did die, verse 18. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. See that? But look at verse... 22. What did David respond? And he said, while the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept. Why? For, explaining why, I said, who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? Wow. If you read the book of Psalms, it will be encouraging how many times David realized the Lord can be gracious and merciful to take away or even mitigate the consequences. So you know what you should be doing during the consequences? What you should be doing is that you should take it because you do deserve it. And don't whine about it. You do deserve it. And instead change the thinking that, you know, I could have gotten worse for the consequences of my sin. And you know what? I'm not going to give up the hope that the Lord, he could even take it away. I'm going to tell you one thing. This, this preacher right here, I do not deserve to be alive today or even speak to you. But you know what? The Lord uh, was so merciful to me that I'm able to preach. And not only that, even bless. Even bless. you got to realize David, even though he went through great consequences of his sins, was he not blessed as well in between? You'd be surprised how merciful and gracious God can be. Look at Jonah 3. Jonah chapter 3. So sometimes no, right? But guess what? Sometimes yes. Look at Jonah chapter 3. And we will read verses 8 through 10. So what does it depend upon? So this is really important to understand. How you can get the consequences to go away, it depends upon your sincerity and situation. So that's what these two verses are going to cover. It's your sincerity and the situation. Remember the sincerity of David? He was fasting, right? But then you also saw the situation, right? Nathan said it gave great occasion to the enemies. So because of the sincerity and situation, what happened at the end? The Lord took away the, the child. But in this case, their sincerity and situation, the Lord saw something. Look at Jonah chapter 3, verse 8 through 10. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anchor that we perish not? Did he? And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way, see their sincerity, and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. The situation God saw fit to take away. So the thing is this, is that that's the same thing with everyday life too with people. Depending upon how sincere your heart is, they see, and the situation, how it turns out, then you don't have to go through the consequences. You'd be surprised. That's the same thing with God, you got to understand. So the thing is this, is that what I encourage you is to have that sincerity and make sure that it's in the right situation. You confess and you repent. And I just want to close with one last verse because this is so encouraging. I quote this when I beseech forgiveness sometimes. Sometimes I do this. Look at Romans chapter 6. And there's a wonderful song that goes along with that. Grace that is greater than all our sin. Isn't that what the Bible says? <laughs> Look at Romans. It's going to be chapter 5, excuse me. It's going to be Romans chapter 5 and verse 20. Verse 20. No matter how much sin increases, you know what's greater than your sin? That should make you sing and shout. Verse 20, moreover the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, what? 
grace did much more abound. So you know what? I'm going to write that as another promise. I'll just add that in and we'll close it here. In Romans chapter 5 verse 20, you should memorize that verse and keep it in mind. No matter how great your sin is, guess what? Grace is going to be greater than all your sin. That's what the Lord promised to you. Why? We live in a dispensation of grace. And that's a blessing. We're in a blessed age called the church age. It's a dispensation of God's grace.